Good morning, guys. <laughs> so this will be part four of the perimeter fence. Um, oh, mosquito. <clears throat> so I am going to be continuing coming around the front yard and uh, working my way to the back. Um, a couple of things. We did pick up a gate. That gate's just sitting there. It's not attached to anything. It's just leaning against the post. So this gate is going to be our main gate on the driveway and then eventually down the road i'm going to build um, a nicer gate or i don't know more decorative or something out of wood um, that's going to go down on the main gate and then this gate will get moved up to this position where it is now so this will be kind of the upper gate um, for eventually when there's you know the driveway continues um, in the meantime what I will be focusing on in this video is going to be um, rerunning the uh, fence around the front yard, attaching it to the post that I put in there on the last video, stretching it out, getting it to this point um, behind the water catchment, and then from there it's going to run up to the corner here and then over here to these posts. Um, I still have to set those posts there, so I have five posts left that have to be set and then I also have to do all the horizontal pieces on them. Um, so I'm gonna try to get all that wrapped up in this video. Um, and then the next video will be just focusing on the gate itself. So that's what's gonna happen in this video. Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. All right, so picking up pretty much where I left off, um, I have this horizontal in on here. So basically what's going to happen now is I'm going to end up uh, cutting the fence right here and then pulling this section of fencing back from around the trees and then bringing it up around these two posts and then bring it back up to this point. So this is going to be the termination for one end of the fence. On this side going to the house is still going to remain but it's just temporary until the entire fence gets completed in the gate and then this section this piece of fencing will get removed. So uh, right now, like I said, I'm going to cut this here, pull this back, and then restring it around those two back up to this point. And then it'll get attached here, and then I will stretch it down to there, attach it there. Um, I don't have a cross piece for that section yet, so I may or may not do it. I'll see how tight uh, I can get the fence pulled without the cross piece. Um, what had happened on this one, I intended for that to be an eight foot beam in between and either I marked it wrong or it got drilled wrong, but the, the inside distance is like eight and a half feet. So if I do end up putting a post there, it's going to end up being like a two by six or a four by four or something like that in between. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to get the fence strung around it and then, uh, we'll start stretching. Okay, a couple more days have passed. Uh, it's been really raining a lot here. Probably going to rain today too, but I'm going to try and get some of this done. Hi, can I help you? <laughs> so I have my uh, posts. I have my come along strap. Um, basically what's going to happen is uh, I got all of the staples and all the fencing disconnected from the trees. I have it cut down there. In that corner it's just has one staple holding the two pieces to that post just so the dogs couldn't get out um, so what I'm going to do now is separate that I'm going to permanently attach the fence to that post and then uh, of course pull it out from behind all these trees first and then you can see I have the fence stretched all the way back to those posts um, and then I'm basically just going to be stretching this whole thing out and getting it attached permanently. So you may have noticed that we're going to be um, losing a, a portion of the yard. Um, I had never intended to have this part of the yard open because there's like a very um, steep cliff just past that tree right there, this that main tree right there. And then here there's a little bit. So there's a pretty big drop off right there. And if you remember in the old videos when I was still pulling out ferns and all that, that's where I basically was throwing everything was 
in that pit um, and it still never filled up. So there's a pretty big drop off right there. Um, the fencing will go from that post, you know, in a straight line down to this post. And basically what I'm going to be doing is out here in this area, I'm going to be processing and transplanting uh, a bunch of my lai, which is the tea plant, which is this green one right here. So they come in a lot of different varieties. Um, I have one in the back around the corner there that's red. Um, I have some red and green ones over there by the corner of the house. And basically what I'm going to do, or when you process that, is you cut off the plant. So you basically just take a pair of, you know, like branch cutters. And I'm going to cut this down to about, I don't know, knee height, between knee height and waist height. And I'm going to cut it off there. And then this section of the tree, I'm going to cut into about 12 inch pieces. And then I'm going to keep those in a bucket and each one of those pieces will grow into a new plant. So as you can see, there was a lot of it planted along the fence line previously. Uh, and basically what I'm going to be doing is just spreading it out. So this whole area up here is eventually going to be all lai. And I'm also going to do the same thing to this plant up here. I'm not sure what type of plant that is, but uh, same principle. I can cut that and it'll grow into new plants. So that'll populate this whole front area. Okay, so let me get to work stretching this, uh, getting it attached and stretching it. I'm not really gonna film a whole lot of this. I'll just come back when I have it, you know, done. Um, it's kind of boring and tedious. <laughs> All right, man, that's some work. Okay, so the fence is completely pulled back. I'm going to start rerunning it around, around, over to there, and attach it, and then stretch it back. Okay, so I have this first section stretched. Um, now I'm going to need to attach everything on this post. I'll attach here, and then I'll take my assembly, and I'll move it to the next set of posts, and then stretch this section. And then once I do that, I'll be able to staple to this post. getting there all right so we've got this section tacked up see the staples on there the sun actually came out for a couple minutes it's been raining the last I don't know hour or so so I stopped working got this stretched of course I'm gonna need to add T posts in here the fence is pretty tight but you can see how it's leaning over a little bit there in the middle this is a pretty long stretch this is probably uh, maybe 70 feet or so and then uh, I will also be adding some t-posts in this center section here as well and just like that it's pouring again <laughs> yeah so I have the fencing attached up to this post and I think what I'm gonna do from here is I'm actually gonna run it around the water catchment tank and then attach it back to the corner of the house here and that's where it's gonna have to stay until I get the remaining post for up there, and then also I get the gate done. Okay, so a few days have passed. Um, it's somewhat sunny today. <laughs> so the post, uh, they finally had the post back in stock at Tractor Supply. So I'm going to set these final five posts. This is all that's left. Three in that corner, and then two here. Um, this gate is just here temporarily, like I said in, uh, previously. Um, looking over at the house there, you can see the... I did end up getting the fencing around the catchment tank and then it's attached back to the corner of the house. So that gave the dogs uh, quite a bit more space to go in for now. Um, it'll stay like that until we actually get the main gate in and get the fencing closed up down there. And then once that happens, I can take this around there, stretch it up to these posts, which will be in, and then over here to this one where the chickens are. Okay, phew, done and done. 
So I didn't time lapse this because this one was kind of a pain. Because um, my water and my electrical cord probably would have reached, but the water doesn't reach. So I had to mix over here and then drag the mixer over here and back and forth a few times. <laughs> These are in. Um, these will set overnight. Uh, this corner, I'm not going to put the horizontal pieces on yet. Um, this one I will. Um, the reason I'm waiting on here is because, let me uh, move position. Okay, so from down here, you can see this wall here is probably a good four to five feet tall. And then it tapers down here and kind of has a little bit of a bump up there. So what's gonna happen eventually, once I start building the garage, is there will be a retaining wall here, uh, either a stem wall or uh, blocks. I don't, I'm not sure which one I'm gonna do yet, but I'm gonna build that up for that wall of the garage. And then when I do, I'm gonna backfill against that wall. And when I do that, I'm going to raise this corner up probably a foot or two so that it's not totally level, but like fairly level. Um, so when I do, the fencing will end up moving up and the horizontals will have to be higher. So I'm going to just wait until I get to that point before I even put those horizontals in. Because there's no point in drilling and mounting those and then having to redo it. Then you have a hole in your post and yeah. Anyway, I hope that kind of explained my thinking. Um, so these are done. I will let them sit overnight and then I'll start working on the horizontal. All right, so what you saw there was me starting this uh, section of fencing. As you can see, I got the horizontal piece in, everything's bolted up. Um, I have the fencing attached right here. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and stretch it down to there. Okay, so this is spread, uh, stretched fairly tight now. So I'm gonna put another row here of staples and then I'm gonna secure it on this one and then once this is secured, I'll go and I'll slide that portion of the fence down because there is a little bit of a drop here, so there's an opening at the bottom. So I'll slide the fence down, then I'll attach it to that one. So I was thinking yesterday, um, I have another plan that I'm going to do. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take that gate that's up at the top right now, and I'm going to end up installing it right here. So on this set of H's that's here, that goes across, I'm gonna put the gate right here. And my thinking behind this was, uh, let me flip this around. So my thinking behind this was, one, it'll help me get the yard fenced in sooner so that I can let the dogs loose. It'll give me more time to work on the gate because that's gonna end up being a whole nother series, um, probably with a couple parts in it. Um, and then I also can, you know, build the gate that I want to build as opposed to just putting one of these wire mesh gates up there. And also my thinking is that having a gate here is going to be necessary because the gate that will eventually be there is going to be on a, an opener, you know, so you have like a garage door opener type remote and then you open the gate. Um, and then we'll have a secondary gate up here. So when we're home, this gate will be open once, you know, once the main gate is built. Um, but when we leave, I want to be able to close this gate to keep the dogs up here rather than um, have to worry about them running out the gate when we drive away, um, you know, before that gate closes. Either that or we'd have to wait till the gate closes. I think it would just be easier. And these gates are fairly inexpensive. Um, that 14 foot mesh gate was about, I think it was 220 bucks, which is pretty inexpensive. So I'm gonna put that gate here. 
and then eventually down the road we'll get another gate that will go up top but what I'll be able to do now is to get everything fenced in of course I still have a lot of t-posts to put in around the front yard around the side um, we'll be up in the back as well so um, that's what I'm gonna work on now I'm actually going to get that gate mounted down here okay so the way that these gates work they have these brackets on here and then you get these pins so this pin obviously screws into the wood post and then it goes into the bracket now it could go either way it could go you know up or down uh, but the ideal is that between the two brackets you either want to have them facing away from each other or facing towards each each other because if you have both brackets like this then somebody can just lift your gate up and open the gate so it's not really secure so you either need to have both of these pins towards each other or away from each other and then you have a little bit of adjustment because this piece clamps down but it can slide up and down so if you let's say i put in the top one here and i got the gate hanging on there and then i go to put this one on obviously if they're facing apart from each other you can't put it together so you loosen this bracket slide it up put the gate in place then slide it back down over the pin and that's how it works on this side so when you're doing this i have my level there and you want to i guess make this as straight up and down plumb as possible to drill these two pins in because you want the gate to swing you know true if you have them off a little or you know crooked or out of alignment then the gate's not going to swing right so i'm going to take a measurement of what these brackets are and then i'm going to use my level to make it plumb you know vertically and then make my marks and then i'll drill the holes okay so i have a mark here that's 12 inches off the ground because i want this gate to ride pretty low um, that bracket right now is about 10 inches from the bottom of the gate so i have my mark here at 12. the distance between the two brackets is about 20 inches so that's this mark here so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my level and use the top sight here to make sure that it's straight and then I'm going to do mark my crosses and then I'll know where to drill. So these brackets are pretty versatile because the bracket itself can rotate around the gate as it needs to. And then these can also be mounted this way. They can be mounted this way, depending on how you hang your gate. So in my case, it's going to be this way. And the gate will only open and close one direction. Um, if you had it like this and it was on the inside of the post, your gate could open both directions as long as it didn't hit the other side post. So um, this one is exactly 14 feet. So my gate will be on the outside of these posts. All right, I have these pegs in and I chose to have them facing apart. So there is a little bit of adjustment on these, um, depending on if you move them in or out. Um, that will make the gate you know tilt i guess tilt this way or this way if you're looking at it which will affect if it swings up or swings down as it's swinging out so uh, adjusting that will is one of your adjustments another one is rotating these clamps so um for my gate to fit which the spacing on here is almost exactly the size of the gate so i'm going to turn these clamps so that they're um, maybe about here not quite perpendicular to the gate but maybe a little bit off about right there man that was uh not as easy as i was expecting it to be <laughs> but i got it on there's the gate closing and it does touch over here a little bit, but that's fine. Um, I may actually have to break some of that concrete or um, just cut a notch in it 
because right here it's a little high. I think the, the small dog could probably slip under there if he really wanted to. But that's pretty much it. It's mounted. So, yeah. One thing I wanted to add when you're hanging a gate like this, which is this is the first time I've hung a, a farm, farm style gate like this. These brackets have to be super tight. Otherwise it just moves. <laughs> and if you weren't, if you didn't have such a tight uh, spot like I do, because this one, the gate just, just fits. So I don't really have any slop. If it was just a straight, you know, opening and you had a few inches on either side, that wouldn't really be as important, but I had to make sure to really clamp those down. So I just ripped out all of this and I quickly remembered how much I hate a Louis fern. <laughs> That's these ferns right here basically, and they just overtake and kill everything. They'll actually travel up the trees, and they'll like stunt the trees. You can see over there where it's climbed up that tree, which that's just YV, so I don't really care about that. But <clears throat> those of you that have been watching from the very beginning, you, used to, you saw the first videos where my entire yard was basically covered in this stuff. All the trees all the way around up there had it all the way up on all of these so I had to rip all of that out yeah I really don't like that fern it grows so quick so anyway this is uh, going to be uh, eventually a stairwell but one of the things I'm gonna need to do when closing off the perimeter is I'm gonna need to put rails from here up to the post up there right where Hati's standing. And then this side will have a post or a, a fence, or it'll be, you know, somehow enclosed. And this side over here will just be, you know, handrails and maybe a couple boards or something, depending on how I do it. So basically I just ripped it all out of here and I just threw it over the fence right there. That's been kind of one of my dumping spots for extra vegetation. We get palms all the time that fall off of this tree, so. When they come down I throw those in there you can see some of them in there but yeah okay so that's done all right guys so this video is running long <laughs> I was hoping to have all this fencing wrapped up uh, in this video um, and wrap up this series but it looks like there will end up being one more um, to finish off the rest uh, I still have to extend the fencing from the house up to the corner up above by where the chicken coop is. Um, I have to put in some railings where that stairwell will eventually be. Uh, so there's a bit more. Um, the whole main gate will end up just being a no whole nother series on its own because there's gonna be quite a bit I'm gonna have to do there. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. I think it's already 23, 24 minutes, something like that. So I don't want it to be too long because um, it's just a lot of the same stuff over and over. But if you guys watch it all the way, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I appreciate you guys watching anyway. Uh, so I just want to say thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe and like. And I will see you guys on the next video. Aloha.